And we are live here. It is the Power Hour. Welcome into the show. I'm Steve. The guy down there smoking is C Red. And our special guest tonight is one of my favorite people in this business. It is Jay Cross. Jay is here. How you doing, Jay? What's up, gentlemen? Hey, Jay, what's going on? Before we get started, what's what say that say that intro again for me, Steve? I'm Steve. You're red. Before that, before that, before that. We are live on the power. Well, yes, I know we're taped, but it's live. No, 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 no. What's the name of the show? The Power Hour. Maybe you should go back and check your post from 632 this morning. You know, you're late for a second and uh -uh. red. So, so, so you call this show the gorilla position. I did? No. That can't be possible. I don't do stuff like that. Mm. Go back and look. Why why are you sitting there? Well, we'll I will work. We'll worry about that. Ah! Later. No. Power so you want me to do it now? We got Jay Cross, one Power of the best. Power with red. And you get me mixed up with other people? Well. Ah. All right. I'll you look see at what you. I got to work with. The I got the state. power hour uh, memo. <laughs> we I'm should, glad you got it. I wish I had the budget. Clearly, this is the gorilla position. This is not the gorilla position. That's Thursday night. That's not. That's not right what your. Here. That's not what your post said. It's six thirty-two. God's sake! I, I, why do we do this now? Jay is taking time for us, and you got me looking on social media for nonsense. It's not nonsense. How's it nonsense when you don't even know what show you're doing? Uh, the bit, the one where I did the flying Jay Cross promo. That that says. There's nothing about. I the said 6:32 a.m. <gasps> oh boy! Well, we'll have to fix that. Ah! Uh, so who's wrong? Who was wrong? I never said I wasn't Who wrong. Who was wrong? Oh, I can't wait till Paragon. Anyway, gets... Jay, what's going on, man? How you been? I'm doing good. How are you guys? Clearly, he's senile. <laughs> Not so good, apparently. Well, I mean, we we kind of knew that. Yeah, we we did, but you know, we were trying to give him the benefit of the doubt. You know, before the, the people in the white coat least, show up. I thought know. the home was at least five, six years away, but I mean, two, three, maybe. No, you know, I thought, two, I thought, three. I thought two, three, two, three days, maybe. Yes. Hey, I didn't specify time. I just said two, three. I thought this would be the week where I've got my guy that I feel real good. I feel like red's not your gonna... guy. Your guy, me, me and Jay go back. So I'm not saying you and Jay don't go way back, but Jay's my guy. I love me some Jay cross. Who Gold doesn't stand. love Jay? Who, who doesn't love Jay cross? It's the new stand. Unless you you're there in, unless you're in the ring and you're being hit by Jay cross. I'll tell you what. Jay Cross sustained a career-threatening injury uh, on my behalf, and uh, you know I'll always owe him. Uh, you mean on your watch? Mm. On my watch. I, I fully admit that it was mine. It was all me, and he uh, he came back bigger and better than ever. And uh, the rest, as they say, is history. That's some scary shit back then. Moving right along. So welcome to Jay Cross. Jay, I've known you. Uh, the first time I saw you fight was as part of the Hellbillies. Uh, you guys made a one, a one or two off appearance in crash tested wrestling uh, in the the later period when things started to get supernatural and weird. I think we we were actually booked for the event that got canceled. Because uh, I know I was hyping it, and I saw some I, the, some old uh, Facebook posts come. Which up. hold on, which canceled event? <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I just, I just know it's supposed to be me and backwards versus Willie and, uh, Rian. Yeah. So it, it, was, it was supposed to be that. And then it got canceled. It never happened. So I've actually never worked for crash testing. You were close though. Oh, I, so in other words, he worked for the last canceled show. He did. Then everybody then I jumped. Was, you know, like I, at, at that moment, I had never seen him work. So, you know, I was, you know, I was doing the research and talking to people and they really talked it up. And then I got to actually see him work at, at global professional wrestling a few years later. And you guys were doing the hellbillies. Uh, are the hellbillies still around? Or are you, are you predominantly doing singles matches these days? The hellbillies are talking about coming back. A Let triumphant me, reunion? 
let, let me rewind just a little bit. The best part about that crash tested show is that I still got paid. You so would be I'll, the only one. You I, were the only one. Like, what the, what the, what the, hell? the guy that got paid? I think it took like five months, but <laughs> still waiting for money. Still, I got my money. 2021, still waiting for cash. Damn, he got paid. I know. Well, he's Jay Cross. That you don't use pay. The hell with that. Look, you pay. Oh, Jay you Cross, know what? Hurt. When we get done with this, I'm calling the evil genius. Uh, <laughs> I need my money. Forward. <laughs> uh, hellbillies are coming back. Uh, <laughs> man, the hell with that. I need my $15. You know how gas, how much gas is? Anyway, okay, y'all coming back. When? Uh, no, no date yet, but it's going to be me backwards and EJ. Probably in the Wisconsin area. Is this what, what is this going to be JWA stuff or is this going to be somewhere else? Uh, somewhere else. I, I can't say details at the moment because i don't want to get myself in trouble because it's not official yet but uh you don't want to be future endeavored before <laughs> the first dope. yeah i mean that's I, yeah that is a bad it tends to happen uh I, so I, yeah I, we're we yeah. are talking about coming back and uh pretty excited about it it's been a little bit had some had a run with willie since then and which kind of happened by accident but it worked out so We'll talk about urban country. Urban country. I, I love uh, I loved the Hellbillies because I, I loved how you and Backwoods worked. It was just the, the way you guys came to the ring, the way you guys handled your business. And you were some of, in some of the early matches that I saw in the early GPW days, I always thought of all the people that were there and a lot of vets and a lot of people that have been around a long time were at early GPW. I always thought you guys played the crowd better than just about anybody and uh you know the rage's whole thing was playing the crowd but you guys you guys were something special getting those crowds up because they loved you i just wish it could have lasted longer <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah i mean you, we, you and me both i tag with with backwoods and then the other member of our little group is ej and me and ej created team sob and for some reason team sob kind of got it just launched a lot further and faster than me and backwards did. So you've, you've had, a, you've had, how, when did you start performing as a wrestler? What, what year did you break in? Cause I, I was trying to steal pictures to put together the little promotional photo. And I saw some on your Facebook page, I saw some pretty young Jay cross pictures. Yeah. I mean, I, I broke in, I started training in 2008, I broke in, in 2009 uh, and then, I mean, at that time, so I broke into 2009, but I think it, it was probably like, you know, I was wrestling once a month, once every other month for a good, like two, three years before I finally got some, some consistent bookings. So 2009, but I kind of usually say that I didn't get to start, start until 2011, 2012. So you're, you're over 10 years in this business. That's a long time to put your body on the line. Yeah. I have two injuries for, for my years of experience. So <laughs> knock on wood, but I, I think that's pretty decent. No, I mean, they both ended right. up in surgeries, but. <laughs> well, one of them was really horrific. Uh, and we're going to talk about that as the show goes forward. Thanks um, to Steve. Yeah, I, I will accept some. Well, not, it wasn't specifically my fault, but it was involved in a storyline that you, I. Hey, I, send him the bill. <sighs> it's just, I, Thank you. I don't even have a budget for this show. What, what, how am I gonna? Doesn't pay? matter. You got the man hurt. The yeah. least you can do is pay his bill. There were other, there were other <sighs> things involved in that injury. It wasn't just me. But <sighs> I, it okay, back. okay. On to the next business. So, Lord have mercy. When Backwoods left, and you still Backwoods. Were, let's put that Backwoods did not leave. <laughs> on his own reconnaissance i was trying to be go ahead red i was, I was i'm just, just saying just uh ahead. just like i was uh which is funny because you figure uh you removed backwoods and you removed me and then urban country appeared so they did um urban country 
uh, was Jay and Willie Richardson. And obviously, C Red, you have a, a lot of years under your belt with Willie. What was it like developing Urban Country? Because Urban Country did some things that I thought were pretty impressive. Let's not forget the Dudley Boys tribute, which is still one of the greatest things I've seen in in uh, in independent wrestling in Chicagoland when you guys came out dressed to the nines. Uh, I've never heard a crowd mark quite that hard. It was pretty impressive. Uh, but you guys had quite a run. You, got, you guys had a multiple championship title runs. Two. So talk about your, what was your experience like in Crash Tested? Uh, not Crash Tested. Wasn't Crash Tested. And global, sorry. For global. Uh, I mean, I I had fun global. I enjoyed it. Um, I'm, I'm sure there's lots and lots of uh, opinions about global. But mm, I, don't know, I, I, I feel like the one thing I can say about myself is i'm not gonna say that like i can play the game but like i just i just don't let shit bother me i kind of stay under the radar i do my own thing i don't get involved in shit and i never really had any problems and that's why when global was going on and then when um braun and stuff started their own fed i worked for both for a while and i was really the only guy that was able to do that that was a that was a, a very very stressful time for a lot of people. Uh, and, and, what, and what Dynamic did was pretty impressive. I mean, you know, from their debut show all the way through the big uh, eight hundred and eight it was eight hundred eighty people in the venue at at the big uh, cross promotional show. I mean, it, it was a great place to work with great people, as was GPW. Uh, and you did both because that's the thing. Uh, unless you sign a contract. Uh, with a company with exclusivity rights, uh, you should be able to, to work wherever you want. And you know, that, mm, say that again. I, I said, uh, unless you sign a contract with exclusivity rights, you should be able to work wherever you damn well please because you're not contracted. You're, you know, that if there's nothing signed. Um, and that was something that I preached when I was uh, doing my best to kind of keep uh, things moving along down in global. I, you know, it, it was mm, you know, after me, after you. Thanks a lot. Wherever people wanted to work should have been okay, and that that's something that uh, I see in this business way more than I should. Uh, you know, promoters uh, tend to uh, get a little saucy when it comes to people working multiple places, and I think it should be okay. You should be able to put your brand out there wherever you need to, don't you think? I agree. I mean, unless you want to pay me to sit at home and not do that show. <laughs> I mean, it, don't don't get it twisted. There are companies, or there's at least one company that I know of still here in Chicago. I don't know if they're doing that or not, uh, but they were paying people to strictly work uh, for them and them only. And it's funny because uh, at the height, I'm not gonna even say the height, but they were a hot company and they were told to bring in us, uh, the Soul Touches and the word got back to us that we we're uh, we work too many places, and it's like, but we're a hot commodity right now. Why wouldn't you, you know, bring I mean, us in? Oh, you know? promoting your brand and making a name for yourself elsewhere. You right. are no you know, value. And it was it was the fact that dude, we're on we're worldwide at this point like yeah capitalize on it but to be told and then i had a friend they were told the only way they could work there is they couldn't work anywhere else in chicago uh they had to sign exclusive contract mm -hmm. but the pay didn't balance out it's like well you know so if, if the money is there that's one thing but I mean, right. I mean, if it's if, if you're one, gonna pay me not to work, great, you know. Yeah, but I mean, th there's only been like one company that I I said that I wouldn't work another show for, and it wasn't even because I was asked. It was more about respect. It was it was a fundraiser type company. They ran once a year. It was huge. There's another company that's running that place now, and it was brought up, and I was just like, hey, I'm 
I'll stay loyal to, to you guys. But they didn't ask me. It was just kind of a, it was a, we have a good thing there. And I didn't want to, to ruin my name or anything like that with anything else in that area. It's funny how in 2021, uh, or even 2020 for that matter, that this thing still comes up and you're looking at wrestlers going here, there, and everywhere, especially from Chicago, uh, you know, and it, it shouldn't be that hard to work. If somebody wants to book you, you know, you should be allowed to go. And I, I've, I've always had a bit of a problem with the narrow mindset that you work here. And if you work somewhere else, you're not going to work here anymore. Uh, I think that's a little bit of an archaic concept uh, in wrestling as it is now, but you know, I'm not as savvy and haven't been around as long as red has. So I, I don't know what you feel about that red or even you, Jay. I mean, you got to grasp the concept. I came from Windy city. So when I was coming up, uh, you didn't work anywhere else. You, you, you didn't, that was a no, no. And um, unless you were, you know, in Sam's eyes considered uh, a vet, you know, so uh, I was, I was a rookie that broke that rule, but I looked at it as a man, you know, and I went to Sam and said, Hey, look, uh, this company wants uh, me and Marche and I think it was just me and Marche at the time. And I asked him, I said, do you mind us working this show? And he was like, are we booked? I said, no, we're not. He said, okay, I don't have a problem with it. And I think at that point, you know, he didn't think, you know, oh, we're in his backyard or whatever, you know? So, but I mean, I get it again. A lot of times, again, you couldn't, you couldn't go work for the other guy. You know, it was either you were loyal here or not, you know, so. I, I think it's important to get your name out there, but I also think it's important to think about where you're putting your name. Oh, Ex for sure. Especially a lot of like the young guys. I mean, I did this. Uh, I've, I've done, I guess, that mistake twice as far as like, there's a lot of young guys that when you break in, everybody wants you and everyone's offering you to go to their place and, and come in. But like when you're, when you're green and you're just breaking in, you, you really should stick to your home company and you really should stick to your trainers and you really should be loyal to that until you get some, uh, some experience and, and know what you're doing. So like I did that when I was young, I, I ended up breaking out and took a whole bunch of random bookings. And then I ended up breaking my leg and then, which ultimately ended the relationship with my trainer. Um, but I mean, as far as that, like there's, there's no heat between him and I, I mean, I don't really talk to him, but I mean, I was young and dumb and uh, it is what it is. And then the only other time is I was working for, uh, I'll just say it. I was working for PPW for a long time. And uh, eventually after working for PPW for like, you know, every week for, years and years and years I finally was like hey I'm just I'm gonna take these other bookings and like break out and slowly as I took more bookings and got a little bit bigger and got my name out there and got more bookings it was it was kind of told to me that I was no longer welcome there but I mean I also think it's good to to break away from that stuff you can't yeah. get complacent it first of all you don't get better in this business if you work uh the same guys Mm -hmm. all the freaking time so if as an example so if you and backwoods wrestled each other every month it after a while it loses its flavor you know what i'm saying yeah you and know, after like, a while, it, better, it better be a damn good match <laughs> i mean wh whenever the blow off is but you know but like I, I, I i'll use last night you know I fell asleep during McIntyre and Sheamus because I'm seeing it so often, you know? So for me, there is no appeal at this point, you know, and it's if, like- I've, I had a feud with uh, Malad Akbar a long time ago. And like, it was it was a fun feud. I liked uh, working with him, but uh, it got to the point where like, they'd put up the flyer and fans would be like, well, it's gonna be a hell of a match, but Jay's gonna lose. 
why do you say that? I'm only 29 and 0 against him. I could get it this time. <laughs> and I mean, you know, I just think people need to understand. You know, some people treat this as a hobby. Some people treat this as a business. And again, if you have a product, which is yourself, <clears throat> which is myself, my job is to get my merchandise, my brand, my product in front of as many people as possible. If I keep doing that in front of the same hundred people, you know, yeah, okay, January, I might roll off hot. You know what I'm saying? You know, oh, I didn't sell t shirts, I didn't sell eight by tens. I, I'm good. If you work in front of 100 people and 75 of them already have your T-shirt and they already have their 8x10. Right. You're not come, come July, I'm done. You know what yeah. I'm saying? There's And then I'm stuck with all this stuff. And, and again, the- yeah, it's on me. You know, yeah. but then you're like, you know, so I don't get, you know, and here's the thing, the funny thing, especially some promoters, um, when they... Um, they get mad because you take another booking, but you tell them about it. You know, you're man enough and you come up and you say, um, it wasn't hey. my no, it wasn't, you know, but it was a figurehead, you know, and at least and, at that time, you know, and the, the aggravating part is again, you know, if I come to you as a man for four months and tell you every month that I won't be here on this date, you know, and, you know, it's because it's not because of money, but it's because I made a commitment a year ahead, you know, and I hold a title, you know, uh, I have to let me be a man and live up to my obligations. So when you have a problem with me doing what I need to do as a man, I got to question you as a man. But the funny part is most of these promoters have been down this road and yet they seem to forget what it's like when you're out there trying to bust your butt and try to make a name for yourself. My, my philosophy about pro wrestling has always been you're only as big as you make yourself. That, that's how I looked at it. So, I mean, like if when you go to a show, I mean, like, so I've, I've done big shows and I've done small shows. The reason I lost the company that we were talking about is because I got an opportunity to work at Brew City Wrestling. And at the time, that was probably the biggest company that I had the opportunity to work. So I took it. But I mean, so if you show up to that big show, there's, you know, hundreds and hundreds of people and you have the potential to make a lot of money. But also when you go to that small show, let's say next week where there's 75 people, but you're the only guy in the card that has t-shirts, eight by tens, video, custom music, all that, you automatically put yourself at another level, which, I mean, I personally, I've seen it many times where like, there's two guys on a show that have merchandise and they end up big sellers simply because people never have seen pro wrestling. They came to a show and they said, oh, that guy must be a big deal. He's got a t-shirt. I don't know if you guys follow uh, Robert Anthony on Twitter. Ego? Uh, the Ego. Okay. So if you paid attention over the past couple of days, Ego has been dropping knowledge uh, and putting out uh, like what he was getting paid from particular shows. Uh, so he had he has a pad and he writes mm-hmm. down. So what he got paid, uh, what he spent in gas, what he spent in food, what uh, what he sold in merch and at the end you know was it a good night or was it a bad night you know oh my god if people did that you know but to piggyback off of what you were saying the the biggest thing in this business and i i try to tell young people well everybody's younger than me hell um but especially the guys that's coming up Invest in yourselves. And I've been saying it for years. Invest in yourself. That's one of the things, Jay, when I first met you that I loved 
is that you look professional, you look like your character, and you had merchandise. Lots and even of- though, and even though at that time you and Backwoods were still together, you know, you guys still you had merch, and it's you know everybody jokes on me because I'm all about merch. <laughs> you if if my face and my name can be put on it, I'm selling it. I agree. <laughs> you know, so and again, it's it's I look at it this way. If you work a show and there's 15 wrestlers in the room and you're the only one with merch don't you? I, I really think you're gonna come. You're at the end of the night. You'll walk away and you won't even worry about your envelope. You'll be like, "Oh, okay, yeah, thank you very much, appreciate it." You see what I'm saying? You know, I've, I, I've personally made you know double, triple in merchandise than I have at shows a few times, and I mean, and and the envelope wasn't light. I mean, it was just. I had merch and no one else did. I will I will forever I tell this story a lot. We did a show in Chicago in Philly. And it was our second appearance. And this time I said I'm going prepared. So I had two suitcases. One, I decided to put my gimmick clothes and my regular clothes in one bag and I put T-shirts, DVDs, buttons, keychains, all in one suitcase. I literally came home with nothing but an empty suitcase and was able to share all of that with the boys. And again, I always say, again, the boys didn't put in on any of it, but I felt because, guess what? That's our brand that I needed to share it. And I don't say that to gloat. I, it, it just showed me the power of merchandise. If you have it, people buy it. And again, for me, three nights, and I sold every freaking T-shirt, DVD, picture, and came home with nothing. And I, I had enough to say, here, boys, here's some money, just extra. I mean, it works, but you've got to invest. And a lot of people don't, you know, again, Piggy, going back to Jay. When you look at Jay Cross in the ring, he looks professional. I can take Jay Cross. Like, it pissed me off because I what are they called the Bears or something, whatever? Like, that name sucks. Um, (laughs) But they appeared on AEW Sunday night. And I swore they were like a knockoff of the Hellbellies. And I was like, what? Really? Where's Jane oh. Backwoods? Where are they? Is that Seriously. Because these guys, like, their singlet did nothing for me. Like, it didn't make me say, oh, wow. No. I mean, but when I've seen Jay by himself or in a tag, I've always said, wow, okay, he has it. He he gets it. And a lot of young guys, they don't. You know, again, uh, somebody posted on social media two days ago or yesterday, and they were advertising a match they were going against somebody. And I was like, oh, wow, okay, well, let me see the guy that they're working. I was done like you got a pair of tights off of Amazon and you painted your face green what there's a lot of that I don't know what I you're mean, talking I, about. and I I know but it's like I have a friend and her son started wrestling like two years ago and I've been helping him out and the first thing he asked me like what could he do and I said well after you start your training get real gear so not only did he get real gear he started designing gear and i was proud of him you know but you know going back to jay you know you jay has always 
one thing I can say about Jay, Jay acts professional, he looks professional, and he's professional in the ring, you know. So, well, I you. mean, my kudos to you that, you know, you're one of the guys that, that got it and get it right, you know. A lot of people don't, you know, unfortunately. Well, it, it goes back to it's a business. I mean, if you have to treat it like such. So is there stuff that's going to go wrong? Yeah, but you can't lose your shit and make yourself look like an idiot because it's yeah. going to get around. We've seen that many, mm. many times. Uh, I love it when Jay Cross comes to an event and he's wheeling in his uh, crates of stuff and the kids that would come to the shows uh, you know, would always go wild over the vast merchandise cross table that was uh, was always there, which I always thought was spectacular because nobody else was doing it. Um, also, he took all my space because I wasn't He did because you weren't there, right? Because uh, you told us that you were going to wrestle four months ago. <laughs> we know the story. Mm. Not my watch. Uh, anyway, Jay Cross also is a master marketer. Uh, Raise the energy drink. Uh, I actually bought some because of some fly ass Jay Cross promotional material on social media, and it's delicious. Tell us about that. Uh, I'm a I'm an ambassador for Rep Sports, who has Raise energy drink. Uh, it just kind of was one of those things where I, I drink energy drinks all the time. So I was like, you know, I should probably just get like sponsored or something. So I, I made it happen. <laughs> <laughs> Say what, that's what I'm talking about. He gets it. Oh my God. Ladies and gentlemen, he's dropping nuggets. He's a smart so man. All you wrestlers, listen to Jay Cross. Pick his brain. Now, I ain't saying well, going uh, out and, you know. Collar and elbow. Can use my promo code there too. Promo code. There are lots. Now of hold on. Who who is? I, I mean, I, is that that's not Al Snow's? Is yep. it? Oh, okay. All right. Okay. So if you use Brawler J on that site, you can get fifteen percent off your T-shirts. And if you use uh, Cross on Rep Sports, you can get fifteen percent off. I did. I like the grape flavor. That was my favorite raise. Uh, I like Baja Lime. So you'll bring me a grape one on Saturday? Thank you. I don't have any, right. right now, but when I get some, I will. No, no, Saturday. Saturday. Also, you would think, uh, based on all of the advertising you do on social media, uh, I'd like to think that Chipotle is treating you pretty well as, as well. I only wish. What is it with you and the damn Chipotle? Man, every hey, man, time Chipotle is good. You're eating a damn yeah, look. What the if, hell? If, if, you go, if you go to the right spot, if you go to the right spot, I, I don't Chipotle. understand how some of these Chipotles, they mess up your order and they're so basic, you know. I got I got tricks for Chipotle. If anybody out there is is related to somebody at Chipotle, let them know that J Cross needs a sponsorship. I, I don't care about money. Just give me free food. I, I plug you probably once a week. At least. Uh, <laughs> At least. That's a lot of Chipotle. Is that your cheap meal? No, that's just my meal. <laughs> hey, I just hey, I just got ass, bro. I'm just uh, saying. <clears throat> I've never been a body guy, so. But how did you that, that that flying J cross air cross as I called it? That's that's a hell of a maneuver for a big fella to to fly through the air with the greatest of ease. I always uh, I always love the fact that you could do things that smaller men do uh, as big as you are, which I think is a testament to your athleticism. Well, thank you. I mean, I, I try I try to spice things up. I try to see what big guys are doing. I try to do stuff a little bit differently. Jay, Jay Cross is not just reckless. He's not just a brawler. He is thick and pretty. I, I want to ask you that as well. Thick and pretty indeed. Uh, what Reckless. I, I knew the brawler and I, I've you know seen all the, the incarnations of Jay Cross through the years. Where the reckless? Where, where's What's that from? Uh, reckless is from a long, long time ago. I died and I'm kind of bringing it back. I feel like when you watch me, you know that I'm a brawler. So I don't have to tell you that. Um, so I'm just kind of changing it up. I, I went with Outlaw Jay for a while. Now there's some other guy doing Outlaw, saying he's the original. And uh, I let him know he's not. <laughs> Tyler. Ooh. Yeah, you know who you are. 
Shots fired, Bodine. Shots fired. Oh! So, okay. He's going to be on an upcoming episode of this show. We'll be sure to give him is your he? Yes, he is. I don't know. You know, I just sit here. So. Anyway, I, I can give him that. He's wearing my old tights. Literally, my old tights. Wrestling is such a small community. Wow. Family, isn't it? But you know, I mean, he, he can be the original in the hand me downs. Go for it. <laughs> There's a fight brewing. There's a man. Some booker out there is better but, watch this and make that happen. Let me ask you this. Did did you, you give them to him? You sold them to him? No, I gave them to somebody else because somebody else was looking for trunks. So I was kind of like, hey, you can have these take the law off, whatever. And then they sold them to him. Everything okay. old is new again. So that's 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 where reckless comes from. Reckless is because I've 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 played the game. I've been the nice guy. Uh, I'm not saying I'm going to be a dick, but I'm just kind of tired of like being pushed over and like. So reckless is the new attitude. Like now, is reckless going to find its way into Chicago Land Championship Wrestling on June 12th as you make your debut uh, with one of the brightest uh, new promotions that are out there? Yes, it will, because a little uh, Star Wars fanboy called me out. So uh, come on, no, you're not going to do that, are you? Ewok, you told me to pull up. Oh, well, in April, you can try to kick my ass, but I haven't been kicked yet. So there you have it, right there, June twelfth. Twelfth. It's coming. Michigan City, Indiana. Chicago Land Championship Wrestling presents Grapple Masters, and it's going to be great. And as Jay said, Ewok is his uh, opponent at that match. And the UHC Championship will be on the line. Um, I have said this before. I'll say it again. Uh, both you and Ewok are two of the hardest strikers that I've ever seen. And now you're going to be colliding in what might be one of the most memorable matches on that card. And it is a card filled with memorable matches. Uh, you're certainly adding to the element that could stroke me out on commentary before the end of the evening. We'll see. So what do you do to prepare for someone like Ewok? Because Ewok is, is, is a different kind of guy, dances to a different kind of tune. And, uh, you know, his his street savvy and the attitude he gets from where he's from make his killer instinct something that's a little bit otherworldly, as Zeke Kickham found out uh, in October last year uh, at the first Grapple Masters. What do you think you have to do to walk out of that building the UHC champion? Well, Jay Cross has just got to show up and uh, be ready for a fight because country is going to meet city. And fireworks are going to happen. Ooh. Ooh, it's a little bit, a little bit country and a little bit rock and roll. See, Red, uh, you walk likes to talk. <gasps> I like to walk. Wow, that is, that's something. And next week on this show, Ewok will be our guest. Uh, so I'm sure he'll have. Really? Yeah, I'm sure he'll have a response to that. You know, Ewok's a professional now. He's got his own show yeah. with uh, the boss, John Bullard. Uh, I'm sure he'll be talking about you as time goes by. Do you have a message to send to the Ewok? I mean, I know you called him a Star Wars fanboy and you said some other, uh, not necessarily friendly things, uh, but what, what are your thoughts? My thoughts on Ewok? Um, I've seen some of his stuff. I like him, but if they're his three things that I hate in this world. It's maple syrup. What? Star Wars. <laughs> what? And Harry Potter. Oh, boy. All right, I'm gone. Ooh. Who needs that shit when you have pro wrestling? <laughs> When I was a kid, when I was a kid, that's what we watched, pro wrestling. We didn't need Harry Potter. We didn't need Star Wars. We had pro wrestling. And that's what Jay Cross needs. Jay Cross needs pro wrestling. He needs beer. He needs his pretty wife, an adorable little child who takes after thick and pretty body by Chipotle, Jay Cross. 
<laughs> uh, recently on social media, I saw a picture of Jay Cross with his son, uh, both wearing the, the, the Bubba Ray Dudley glasses, and the resemblance is absolutely uncanny. Has fatherhood changed the way you approach wrestling in this business? Uh, do you do things differently now that you're a dad or you basically the same old Jay Cross? Um, it, it hasn't, it hasn't. I mean, I think uh, as far as focusing on the business part is a lot more important now. Um, I mean, four or five years ago, I could, I could maybe uh, not look at a financial aspect as much as the fun that it might happen. But I mean, I got I gotta support my family. I got a kid, I got a wife. I got this beautiful man cave. I have to, I have to afford Chipotle and beer. So, I mean, It has and it hasn't. I, I think I've become more focused. I mean, um, I'm excited to get back. I had COVID in November. So I had recently myself. I, I have not. Uh, I think I've wrestled once. No, I, I have not wrestled since I had COVID. Um, and the, the post effects for me were a lot worse than anything during. Um, so I'm just... I'm back in the gym about three weeks now, four weeks. So feeling pretty good, feeling strong, but you know, uh, the cardio of a pro wrestler and, and cardio are very different. So we all know that indeed that's true. As I'm coming to find out, um, obviously, uh, June 12th, we're, we're all looking forward to your debut. Uh, you're, you're going to be, uh, out there on Amazon and on fight and uh, on, uh, powered for TV. So you're going to have a nationwide audience. Uh, we actually do this show on the John Ernst podcast network, uh, which reaches a lot of people across the pond in England. Uh, do you have a message uh, that you want to send about Jay cross to the people uh, overseas that are going to meet you for the first time when this show airs? If you like old school pro wrestling, if you like big men that are going out there to hit each other, and to cause physical harm, who like to drink beer, and uh, I hate to steal the the catchphrase, but are are no flips or kicks, then then I'm your guy. I mean, I try I try to uh, I try to be more of an old school brawler type. I like to get hit. I like to do the hardcore type matches. I like to get. I mean, I I don't like my my wrestling with boundaries. I have seen you do some crazy, crazy things in that wrestling ring, which is why I'm such a big fan myself. Um, I know the Johns uh, that, that run things over there. Uh, they have they have watched our product at CCW and they've, they, they love it. And a lot of people over there really enjoy it. And I think they are really going to embrace Jay Cross. I see maybe Jay Cross uh, hopping on a plane and maybe going over there and uh, bringing some of that old school country uh, to, to the, the British Isles, so to speak. I would love to. I'm, I've always been a big fan of uh, Progress, ICW, NXT UK. I, I love all that stuff. I like to watch it. So, I mean, that's kind of the, as far as the new school products go, I've always liked the, the United Kingdom stuff. It's just so, it, I can't say it's new because, I mean, it's, it's <coughs> old, but it's not being done anymore. So it, it intrigues me. I like it. And I would have been at CCW their very first show had I not torn my bicep. So let's get into that. How'd that happen? Well, well, I, 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 and I choose Steve, him. I've broke my leg and I've torn my bicep and they've both been off flips, catching other people off flips. So I, I hate flips. I hate front flips. Anytime someone goes to the top rope, I'm just like, God damn it. So I mean, like, I broke my leg that way. I tore my bicep that way. That's how it happened. I was in the wrong place at the, the right time, apparently. And who put you in that match? Well, what's funny is I didn't even know that I was a lumberjack for that match. Oh, it was until, a lumberjack match. Until after my match, 
which was right before the lumberjack match. So I came in and they were like, oh yeah, so uh, get ready to go out there and be a lumberjack. And I was like, oh, I'm a lumberjack? And they're like, yeah. And I was like, oh, okay. So I went out there and getting and then standing there and there's this uh, there's this pretty little like petite girl from God knows where she was from. I can't remember, but she's standing in front of me and everyone's grouping up and all of a sudden I see Mitch Blake running and I was like, this guy's too big to do a dive. He's not going to dive. And then he hits the other side and I was like, oh shit, he's going to dive. So this little girl was in front of me. So I like moved her out of the way. <coughs> and as I moved her out of the way, my hand stayed like this and his back went down on my hand and just blew my bicep off of wherever it's connected to. So I, I got up and I was like, man, that's something's, something's weird. So I went in back and I, I found, uh, you know, every locker room's got a doctor, right? So I found Dr. Boz <laughs> and I said, Hey man, uh, I think I tore my bicep and he's like, uh, flex for me. So I did. And he's like, yep. You didn't <laughs> say it right. Like, I was like, oh right. shit. I was like, what is, what does that mean? And he was like, well, you can get surgery, but you don't have to. You'll just be at like 70% the rest of your life. And I was like, oh, so then I'm, I'm sitting there and my wife comes over and I'm, I'm trying to explain to her that I'm hurt, but obviously she's like, well, you're not bleeding. You seem fine. What, what's going on? And I was like, I tore my bicep. She's like, are you sure? And I was like, yeah. So she was like, oh, I mean, maybe it's just bruised or whatever. So then I, I was like, well, does this look all right? So I flexed and she, she saw that there was just a, like a missing, it was just deflated. Like there was nothing there. And you could see it all like wrapped up in the top so that was fun it was horrible mm. i uh i who, who was the figurehead that put you in that match as a lumberjack i'm gonna blame alex bernardino actually because he was supposed <laughs> to tell me and he didn't tell me until like the after like the absolute last minute look look jake jake don't sugarcoat it don't try to make him feel better no i'm just gonna make you happy it was it was steve's fault it Thank was you. my fault. Thank you. It was you know, Steve's I'll, fault. I'll be honest with you. Um, in the seven years I've been doing this, I have uh, virtually no regrets. But that situation that occurred uh, happened for no good reason. So I will always be regretful, and I'm I'm sorry that that happened, man. It was uh, it was terrible. Well, and it speaking of, of it hard the about it. the bicep repair and everything, I I do want to give a shout out to one person surprisingly and we weren't friends before this or anything like we were cordial and we were fine and there's no heat or anything but steve boz called me for like the next four to five weeks every other day checked on me gave me ideas of what i could do what i could take how i could repair it after surgery and and everything else so like i i really appreciate steve doing that because it's it's it wasn't necessary um like i said i mean I've, I've broke my leg before and the best part about breaking my leg is i got a double payday because they felt bad <laughs> but uh yeah so did the phone call go something like this hey brother it's the boz brother just checking with your brother something like that okay but but it was it was very appreciated and I, I I will always keep Boz a special place in my heart for that because there he was the only one that like continued to check on me constantly. I mean there was lots of people that reached out, there was lots of people that were helpful, but he was one that took time out of his day to to check on me and make sure that I was all right. Boz is 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 Boz is Boz and I will forever love Boz uh, being one of my trainers. Uh, I again, I had the best trainers in the world, uh, and Boz was my uh, Thursday night uh, trainer. 
So you know. I, I first met him when I first broke in in CLPW for uh, Frank Melson. Oh, Frank! Yeah, I worked. I worked for Frank uh, once, uh, and I think it was his last show. <laughs> Okay. Or close well, to one of his last he, shows. He's had a couple last shows. Right. That's I the love thing. That. It's like it was one of those. It was it was his last hurrah. And he okay. wanted, you know, the boys to be there. And it was like, oh, okay. All right. We'll I think I think I wrestled like two or three of those. But I I like Frank because after uh after I got hurt, I, I broke my leg on a Frank show when I was uh young and dumb. Probably shouldn't have been working, but he, he opened doors and gave me opportunity. So I, I broke my leg on that show. And uh, also I was young and dumb and I didn't have insurance. So I, I got the surgery. Um, I didn't have insurance, so I didn't take any rehab or anything. And then I actually wrestled the next show. Wow. Like it was six, seven weeks later. Damn. Young and dumb. You're either one tough SOB or you're crazy or maybe just a little of both. Maybe I was probably, getting ready to say crazy. You're reckless. Pro- probably both. I mean, I, at that point in my life, I was just like, well, I mean, there's a steel rod holding it together and I took six weeks off. So I think I'm all right. I can't run, but I can walk. Wow. Okay. That's, got, that's grit. Edge says grit. That's grit. That's what that is. I channeled my inner Terry Funk. You channeled something. You channeled- what would Terry Funk do? Use a brand and I. I what? got one of them. I got what? a custom uh, J Cross branding iron. Ooh. Now, how come you don't whip that out every now and again? Bring the branding iron out. That would be pretty cool. I did when I was the outlaw, but you know, there's a new outlaw in town. There's a new. <laughs> we'll talk to Tyler later. Um, once upon a time, I saw J Cross wrestle with his father. Yes. Talk to me a little bit about that because that had to have been just a remarkable experience. Uh, it was something that I always wanted to do, obviously. I didn't think it was actually going to happen. Um, so the thing about young Jay Cross is young Jay Cross grew up in the back of a tiny two-seater truck with the, the bucket seats in the back. And in the front was Tank Thomas, my father, and Derek St. Holmes Esquire. And they drove to their shows and I sat in back. And so from the age of like maybe eight or nine, I mean, I just sat in the back and and went to all the shows that they went to. So, I mean, getting to wrestle with my father later was, was awesome. I, it was a once in a lifetime. And I, I mean, I think, I think anybody would, would love to do that if they had the opportunity in a situation like myself. So the, the opportunity came, my, uh, my stepmom's company ran a show that happened to do a wrestling thing. And I guess her boss obviously knew that I wrestled and he knew that my dad wrestled. So I think he kind of came up with the idea of like, Hey, so why don't we have a father son tag match? So I was like, yeah, I mean, I'll do it. And, and surprisingly, my dad was like, I think I got one more in me. So, so we did it. We, we did a uh, tank Thomas and uh, tank junior. And we wrestled Backwoods Brown and Alex Bernardino. And it was uh, something I will never forget. It was, a, it was a good time. It was definitely something off the bucket list. And I will always hold that day in a special place. That is a, that was a pretty cool moment. And I saw some of the photos from it. And it looked like you guys were just having the best time. Now, you got a little guy. And every day they grow and, you know, you're, you're uh, reckless and an outlaw and a brawler and all of these things rolled into one. Do you think you can stay healthy enough to get a father son match of your very own? Is that something that's in the back of your mind somewhere? Yeah. Yeah, I could do it. That would be pretty darn cool. That's that, that, that just shows general generational wrestling is a pretty darn cool thing. I, I wouldn't do it. The The cool thing is like, so, I mean, he's, he's 10 months old. So he's, he's just kind of learning words, but 
the funny thing is, like, about a month ago, he started doing this. Just, like, staring at his hand. So I was, I was like, I got to get a picture of this, you know. So, so then now he started doing this all the time. So every time he started doing this, I was like, hus, hus, hus. <laughs> so I finally got a picture of it, and I sent it to Bruiser Brody's uh, wife and was like, hey, you know, little guy's channeling, channeling Brody. I saw, I call my son Bruiser Bodie. The, the, the destiny, it, it seems like it's already written in the stars. Uh, Jay, we like to end these shows uh, with something I call rapid fire. And okay. I'm going to name some names. And I just want your opinion of the people that I name. Are you cool with that? Yeah, so this is the Get Jay Heat five minutes of fame, huh? Five minutes of fame. I hope this goes better than the last time we did this. Well, that didn't go very well for me, but this will go well. You don't want to pick the names. I, well, I do, but I, I, I picked very poorly the last time. I think yes. I, I think people will be surprised. There's not a lot of people that I dislike, and the people that I dislike either know that or aren't around anymore. Well, so I don't like, do it. See, I don't do that. I don't, I don't do this segment uh, for, for that kind of heat. I do it because I want it, you know, th there are certain people that just seem to revolve around people in one form or fashion. I just like to hear, you know, what goes on, you know, wh what stories are there. So I'm going to start with a man uh, that uh, you have worked with and, uh, you know, will work with again, most likely. And we'll start off with the evil genius, Aaron Xavier. Dick, but I like him. <laughs> I always tell people, I always tell people, so me and me and Xavier actually uh, had a feud in JWA like seven years ago, hated each other. And I remember telling the booker, I was like, dude, this guy's a dick. Like, we really don't like each other. And, and he just looked at me and was like, oh, it'll make for a killer match, bro. He's good. So, uh, yeah, I, I like Xavier now. I, I tell people I'm very open. I, I told him. Um, He's a dick, but he's not a dick to me, so I like him. You, you. I think he's. I really think he's misunderstood. He is like he's. Sometimes people are like, "Oh, he's such an ass," and I was like, "Yeah, but he's right." And not, not only is is not, he not, not only is he right, but the mind that Aaron has is 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 unbelievable. I mean, and that's even. Short terming it, Aaron. You know, uh, Aaron is the one to put the ARC together. Uh, like I said, I I have I have another friend that really dislikes him, and they have their own you know little feud thing going on and in, in life. But I mean, I told both of them, I was like, look, I like both of you guys. You know, Aaron, you can be a dick. Hey, you can be outspoken and opinionated, and sometimes you're not always right. <laughs> <laughs> so just, uh, what it is i think once you i think once people know aaron you know then they'll see like you you know like you say he's not as bad he, of a guy he's he's, he's a dick but he's a good dick you know yeah. if, if you could say that you know so. i think he's sweet dick aaron xavier the good dick uh you will be uh dealing with him uh at least at some point uh, at Underdog in Rockford, uh, as uh, as uh, the pandemic starts to let us get back to live wrestling, Xavier. Yeah, uh, that he's was the, always that laid was up, the but he's also he's the Underdog champion. And I know uh, when I saw my first Underdog match, you won a trophy that night. Yeah, uh, that's that's the plan is to go after him. Uh, currently, I'm in a feud with Scott Spade, but the the plan is to work my way back up to that belt. Lots of good stuff coming up. Uh, the second uh, person on my rapid fire list or people on my rapid fire list uh, is Hardcore Impact. Hardcore Craig and Polly Tomaselli. Okay. Uh, I love Craig. Uh, I like I like Brandon too. Um, Craig is just a, he's a really good dude. Great dude. And, uh, and, and Brandon's another one that I, I think he's misunderstood. I, I personally like him. I think he's great. Um, and I really hope that this segment doesn't turn into, I think they're great, 
but I, I really think they're great. <laughs> Did you enjoy, I mean, you've worked with them. Do you enjoy uh, grappling with those guys? Yeah. The only thing I worry about those guys is that damn finishing move where Thomas Silly comes off the top rope and stomps your head. <laughs> that'll, that'll leave a mark. That's, that's a time where I'm really glad I'm 320 pounds. Okay. Uh, the next one is a team that you grappled with uh, in, during the GPW days. At least I saw a couple of matches. Uh, the Rage. Okay. Uh, Maddox, Mitch Blake. Uh, the other, there have been members of the Rage uh, that, that have gone uh, 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 through the years. Uh, what are your thoughts on that tag team? Uh, Tom is goofy. He's weird. Oh, no uh, doubt likable but like definitely have to really get to know to understand him um here's here's gonna be a surprise mitch a lot of people don't like him he's never done anything to me i like him uh i mean i don't have any problem with him uh he, he's another one that like i think sometimes he says things that he doesn't necessarily mean in the way that they come out and I think he can be misunderstood for meaning a lot more harmful than he really meant. Um, but I, I like him. I mean, he's, he's kind of a hothead, but I, if you get to know him, you just know how to, for me, it, it, it's Mitch. There it is. See, Red, why you, why you look like you suck it on a lemon? You know why. <laughs> I think I did that for, for Red's benefit as much as anybody. Uh, look, you know, you guys had some great matches with the Rage. Uh, you know, the, the really, really rough and tumble grappling style that you guys both have uh, really made for some entertaining evenings in Midlothian and Posen. Uh, let's move on to yet another tag team. And you talked about the man a little earlier, and we had some fun there right at the end uh, of GPW with them. Uh, that's TJ Steele and Steve Boz, the Bruise Brothers. You had some really great matches with them there right at the end of that promotion. Uh, so I don't know either of them crazy well. I think TJ is hilarious. <laughs> yes, he um, is. I, I love all the stuff that he puts on social media. Uh, the him and Jack Moody stuff. I was dying. <laughs> the the uh, him him training for some match watching horror movies but like with kid and his and his uh his his i'm just gonna call him her wife his wife um it's hilarious he has he has a great mind for for pro wrestling um i i like steve uh like i said he he took care of me um i've known him for a long time i think it, it took me years to understand to understand him because he's very old school and i think young guys sometimes are just like oh he, he always wants to he's, he's so simple he's simple because it works that's good and, and that's that that is what it is he's he's good at what he does and he knows what he's doing and he has a great mind for the business and he's been doing it for so long yeah the last name on my rapid fire list is your urban country tag team partner, Willie to bomb Richardson. I always loved you guys as a tag team. I, I love the way you guys got on in the locker room. You were such great locker room guys. Uh, everybody loves Willie red loves Willie. Uh, I'd imagine you probably have to love Willie too. Yes. He will officially be the person that has hit me the hardest in the ring. <laughs> Potatoes. I, I, potatoes i don't like i don't like to mention willie and potatoes in the I, same ones anymore oh man i so I, i'd worked willie a couple times before that and there was there was a three-way the three-way dance that we did once where like we came back and it was pretty good and i got back there and willie walked in and he told everybody he was like oh top that boys top that and and i remember like just shaking cobwebs out like good god <laughs> And I, and I was like, how was it? And he was just like, oh, it was great. That's that's what pro wrestling is all about. Um, he was actually in one of one of my favorite matches that I've ever been in as my opponent. So it was me and Backwoods versus Willie and Jason Dukes at CSW. 
it's like 90 degrees outside. Uh, fun fact, Backwoods is allergic to mosquito bites. Oh. So it's like 90 degrees out. We're outside. We're waiting for Willie because he's late. <laughs> really? Are you shocked? <laughs> Come so, on. So the our, our music hits for the tag match. Willie walks in. Oh, what are we doing? So me and Backwoods went out and wrestled Willie and Jason Dukes in, you know, 15 to 18 minutes. And it was fantastic. It was a blast. There was one time where me and Backwoods are on the outside and I look up and Willie's hitting the other side. And I look at Backwoods and I was like, he's not going to do a dive, is he? <laughs> and <laughs> Backwoods is like, oh, no, I, I, don't, I don't think he would. And then I look at backwards and he goes, I think he is. And I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> so Willie hits the other side of the ropes. He comes like he's going to go dive through the top and the middle. And then he eye pokes us both. And never have I been so relieved to get poked in the eyes. Because like I told you, I, I hate dives. <laughs> Especially when they're Willie sized people. That's a. That's a big. Uh, yeah, I, I That's love Willie. Um, me and Willie became tag team partners by accident. Really, it was just one of those things we we both didn't like what we were doing at the time and said, "Hey, so why don't we uh, tag?" And he's like, "We, we can call ourselves Urban Country." And I was like, "All right." <laughs> and then um, he he designed all our shirts that we had, so that was. That was nice because usually in the tag team, I'm the guy that designs all the shirts. I'm the guy that puts all the money up <laughs> and then buys all the shirts. And then all the other guys are like, oh, dude, this is really cool. Can I have a couple for free? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody wants free stuff. I was like, you can have one for free because you're a part of the team. But, but think about it. Red understands me. So you order shirts, right? You order shirts. Let's say you order 30 shirts. Well, you know, if you order 30 shirts, that five of those are probably going to be yours and your significant others and your kid. And what, so you're already down. And then you got the tag partners. And if they're in the group, they got to have one. So then you got 30 shirts, but now you're already down like seven. And then you're trying to figure out, OK, do I offset the other costs of the other 23 shirts? Uh you know, do I raise the price or uh, yeah. what do I do? You know, so here's the funny thing. That's why I no longer order bulk. I I, I, I refuse to order bulk orders uh, unless I can get a deal that I can just not pass up. Uh, that's why everybody can visit www.prowrestlingtees.com backslash the soul touches. Um, but that's why I go there because I refuse to take that out. Like, I don't want any more part of that. I, I have a pro with, store too. You and know, walking I mean, around I, with t-shirts, you know, I don't miss that. I mean, I, I just I, don't. I love pro wrestling tees. I have my own store. The thing I miss though is for me personally, I feel like I always sell more if I have them with me. And 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 that's true, because trust me, people always ask. You know, and it's like, I feel like I missed out, but to order the exact amount mm -hmm. is issue one. Issue two is exact sizes. Mm -hmm. And I hate that, you know, because you're sitting there and you're down to your last five shirts. And they're all medium. All, <laughs> all medium. And somebody comes, do you have an extra large? No. See, every time I order more medium, I end up getting guys that are like, can I get three, four, five X? And I'm like, oh, shit, I only have medium. I've and got then that. Every time you order big sizes, then it's like, you know, so it's now the I, smaller now guys I, that want to buy your shirt, you know, and it's like. Now I go with like my, as far as my design, like if it's child friendly, I go for smaller, but my designs are usually never child friendly. So I just, I just order big guy shirts now. It's easier. So. He did his five. I just want to know. Back Give me five. 
Give me backwards. I, I, no, I just want to know. Backwards Brown. So backwards, is, he was in my wedding. So he's he's a, a true good brother as far as this wrestling business goes. He's he's a true friend of mine. Um, as as you and and Steve and everybody else in the wrestling business know, if if you can leave the business with a friend, <laughs> <you're lucky. laughs> true. Uh, so backwards is definitely one of my my true friends. We. You know, we we call each other. We talk outside of wrestling. He's been in my house. I've been to his house. He was in my wedding. Um, so yeah, I, I I'm gonna be in his wedding. So I'm gonna be there. Hopefully, you know. So I'll see if I can fit you on the list. <laughs> Hell, I've known him longer than you. He better get again. I don't need to be in the wedding, but invited. Yeah, backwoods. I'll see if uh, I can pull. Rings. All right. So Jay Cross will be joining us June 12th in Michigan City, Indiana, Chicago Land Championship Wrestling Grapple Masters. He will do battle with the legendary Ewok for the UHC Heavyweight Championship title. You're not going to want to miss that particular match. Jay, I have so many great memories of you uh, from everything you've done in the ring uh, to our filming of a GPW Tonight episode where you got me drunk. Uh, there's a lot of great history there. And it was fun. I, I, I say this with all due respect. You really are one of my favorite people in this business because you always know where you stand with Jay Cross. And that's something in this business uh, that I don't think you should take lightly. I think that's a really, really strong tribute to the character you are. And I think, you know, you're, you're great at what you do and we appreciate you taking time tonight. Thank you. Uh, for anybody out there, check out Rep Sports. Use promo code CROSS. Check out Collar and Elbow. Use Brawler J. 15% off those sites. Uh, Chipotle. Where's my money? Where's my food? <laughs> uh, as far as Ewok goes, Jay Cross likes to drink beer and kick ass. Wait for it. He's all out of beer. <laughs> and we're all out of time. Where are you at? <laughs> we're all out of time here on the Power Hour on behalf of the urban sensation C Red and the reckless Jay Cross. I'm Steve. We'll see you next week on the Power Hour where our you guest sure? will be Ewok. You sure this is the Power Hour? I'm sure this is the Power Hour. Sure? And everybody, you have a great night. We'll you see you. You're positive. Thanks for having me on, boys. See you later.